Tor Williams seconded. And we'll get rid of that off the screen. Sorry, who seconded? I will, Robbie. Now, Councillor Blackie, I'll put it. All those in favour, raise your hand. Say aye. It's carried. Anybody against? No. Uh, any matters arising from the minutes, Councillor Williams? Um, yes, I just I don't know if the staff's here to answer it. Um, I asked the matter about staffing to get all these some of these drainage issues sorted um, for this COVID. Uh, whether they need other, I just like to know whether. The staffing shortages for the contractors are still, as there's still a lot of drains that actually haven't been cleaned um, properly, and winter is just about upon us. Mm. Um, how they're going, keeping enough staff to um, or contracts to do this, or should we start looking at some local um, different contractors to help? Um, because there's nothing worse than a drain not being cleaned out on time, and. Um, uh, you know, we have flooding issues because of, do we need to bring in extra contractors? That's a question because I, I can see that the drains haven't been cleaned yet up to standards. So I don't know whether who's there to answer that question, Nick, unfortunately. No, well, I can see Mr Cleary's joined us, so I'll pass over to Mr Cleary. Uh, look, apologies for being a minute or so late for the start of the meeting. Um, yes, look, I uh, I can answer that generally, um, that question, and then um, perhaps Kelly might be able to add um, some specific detail and details in relation to the drainage um, maintenance. But there is generally pressure across the whole industry uh, in terms of both capital works and maintenance contractors and so um, that is something we're, uh, we're finding a challenge and that's uh, across all of our operations. So, uh, you know, from everything from refuse to um, our road maintenance, the lot. Now, contractors have been um, really good at managing that on the whole, but it's fair to say there's not, not a lot of, if any, spare capacity. Um, and we're finding the same with uh, the Capital Works. Um, with, uh, we actually do... Um, our, our drainage maintenance contract is, um, as you'll be aware, through SICOM, but they actually do subcontract to a local contractor, Michael Stockforth, um, and they've actually brought on extra resources themselves, um, from what I understand. It's, it, but they do have challenges from time to time, and just as an example, they might have all the operators they want, but they need a... It's, it's really hard to find a truck driver. So, look, um, that's being managed, and we do always have the ability to bring in extra contractors if we want. So if the service isn't being delivered, then um, then and that's not happening, then we definitely will. We're happy for you to, um, to you know, talk to me directly about specific drains that you've got concerns about that uh, are behind um, and talk to, happy to take that off line. Uh, Kelly, did you want to take, take add anything to that? Uh, just the only other point to add there is that we are actively working with CORD to look at prioritising which drains they're working on at the moment. Um, so to make sure it's the key ones that have been maintained and getting addressed. Um, but yeah, like Jared said, if there are specific drains of concerns, um, we'll make sure that they are on that priority list as well. My question was, if Cord can't and stop with can't actually get enough staff and contractors on it, should we be start looking? And we've already been told all the existing contractors we use now are pretty much stressed out and full maximised. Should we start using some of the smaller contractors, which are local ones, that have got some ability to do some of this to get some of those drains cleaned before winter and our water season comes. That, that was the question. Should we be doing that? Because obviously all the contracts we use now are stressed and fully, um, well, they can't get around and do it all. Should we be using some of our other smaller local contracts to get them cleaned, um, ready for the winter, before we have some floods? Um, so I'll just answer that. Uh, we can do that, and we can either do that by requesting our main contract to bring on more resource as subcontractors, or ultimately, if we're not happy or really want, uh, uh, do need action, we can engage some ourselves. 
um, w whether we should do that or not. Um, at this point, we are having those conversations with our contractor, um, and if we're not satisfied, then that's a step that we've got up our sleeve to do. Councillor Stewart. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I raised the um, the item about uh, the uh, website listing of all the um, flood issues that uh, the t new team is addressing at the February meeting, um, or oh, March meeting. Um, I couldn't find it on the website. I note that we, uh, I still can't find it. I note that it's um, item 5.1, we address it again. I still cannot find on the website where you go to find these updates. Can someone assist here? Mr. Cleary. Uh, I can answer that one. So the link is actually in the report um, under item 5. Point, oh, sorry, 4.1. Um, sorry, 5.1. Uh, however, the, um, the link in there, the, there have been some delays with updating the website with the latest information. So that's probably where the confusion is coming in. Um, but that would be updated in the next few days. So, so simply, further question, how are people who want to click in the 60 or up to 600 that may want to know where things are at, how are they going to find it? There is nothing on the home page. So we are working with the comms team regarding that and they will make it easier to navigate um, to that specific link, um, including having links from uh, a more front page as well. Well, can you be uh, time frame and be really specific about it? Because I expect to be able to go to the home page, scroll down, and instead of finding a, a reference to library services, Rangiora Airfield or ENC, this to me, a link to the work that the council is doing, addressing all these flooding issues, should be there. Uh, so so that that would be in place in the next couple of days, so definitely by close the play Thursday. All right, thank you. Okay. I haven't had an indication of any further questions Well, matters arising. Uh, I have no deputations or presentations, so I'll move on to reports 5.1. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the purpose of this report is a follow-on update from the previous flood report that was presented to the last uh, UNR committee meeting. Uh, so the flood team is now well progressed with um, a majority of the investigations. Um, pay, uh, table one in the report on page um, 17 uh, shows that we're uh, underway or have completed 26 of the 59 investigations. Uh, so the two that are complete are uh, Porter Place, which was um, the cleaning of Dudley Drain from a Hoka Road down through to the railway line. Uh, that is now complete. And also Queen Street in Oxford. So the Finlay's Drain section. So we have been through there and cleaned out um, three different areas of the drain through there. Uh, 24 investigations are underway, and of the remaining investigations, the majority of those, um, 28 of them, have been assigned, and there's only a, a handful of investigations that are yet to be assigned to anyone in the flood team. Uh, you will note that there are there's updates on um, the five key focus areas. So this is this are areas. These are areas where um, there was either reported repeated flooding or a flooding um, of garages uh, that we are we've, we've elevated because of the severity of the flooding in these locations. So Broadway Ave in Waikuku Beach, 
we have completed a design there and are just looking at confirming that design based on some recently completed survey work. And we anticipate that we will be able to go back to the property owner there in the very near future. So that would be sometime over the next week once we've actually um, uh, confirmed that concept design. The uh, next steps from there were to get their feedback on that and then um, look at uh, whether that work is, um, how, whether we can fund that from existing budgets or whether that would be a staff submission to the draft annual plan. Swindles Road in Waikuku Beach, um, you'll see in the report there, we're looking at a range of different options there. Um, and uh, it's a combination of short-term, medium-term measures right through to long-term measures. We're expecting that that will, um, won't be able to be funded from existing budgets and will be a submission to the draft annual plan. Fuller Street in Kaya Point, we've had a meeting with the landowner there. Um, they're one of two properties whose land wasn't raised up following the earthquake and they're prone to flooding from the drain to the north of their property uh, along the railway line. Um, we've got some further investigation work that we need to undertake on those two properties, but we have a potential a solution there, looking at putting in um, a bund or barrier along the rear of the property installing floodgates um, to effectively try and prevent any uh, overland flow back from the drain into that property. Uh, Cust Road, there's actually three discrete areas that we are looking at in Cust. Um, the, probably the more critical one is at around about 13, oh, sorry, 1838, 1840 Cuss Road, um, where there was um, significant um, flooding near a garage. Uh, there's no positive drainage identified in that area. Um, and the soap pit that was recently installed is not working adequately. So we're currently investigating uh, potential options there to um, resolve that localised issue. The other two sites within CUST, where it is more to do with um, CCTV, inspecting of pipes, maintaining drains, making sure the system, existing system is operating as efficiently as it can. Uh, Ranui Mews in Kaiapui, so two things there. In terms of off-site investigations, <clears throat> we have put a camera through a 300 pipe downstream of Ranui Mews. It's a pipe that goes from Ahoka Road along Vickery Street to the Parnham Lane pump station. And at the lower section of that pipe, we found some significant fat deposits. Um, they were quite large to the extent that they were restricting the capacity of a 300 pipe down to something equivalent to a 150 pipe. So um, that fat has now been removed from the system, uh, which would have significantly increased the um, performance of the offsite system. Uh, on site, we are still continuing to work with the property team to investigate the um, potential venting issue. And we've got a plan in place to undertake some further work, putting cameras um, through some of the private lecturers from the individual units and also to do a simulation to try and replicate the um, uh, issues that were experienced with the toilets on site. The reason that we're still in the, um, following up on that, while we have found an issue off site, we have done some further work to find out that even 
even though uh, Ranui Muse was experiencing issues with their toilets, uh, none of the upstream properties or downstream properties immediately adjacent to Ranui Muse experienced issues with any of their toilets during the event. So while we had offsite issues, we still believe that um, the toilets at Ranui Muse should, still should have been operating uh, adequately, even with those offsite issues occurring. Uh, so that work there uh, will be undertaken in the next couple of weeks. Um, finally, the other thing just to let you know is that we've packaged up some of the survey and CCTV work um, from multiple packages, uh, multiple um, projects into one package in order to undertake the work more efficiently. Uh, so that's just to give you an oversight of where we've got to. Um, happy to take any questions. So I'm not sure whether it's the Mayor or Deputy Mayor, but I see their hand over there. Tis I, thank you, Mr Chair. Right. Um, uh, just around around your view, Muse, where would the fat deposits come from in that line? And if that's down or off site and downstream, so to speak, what relevance will that actually have if the if the places downstream aren't having the backup problem? What relevance at all does it have to run any muse? So the um the the about a year ago, we had some issues with excessive fat deposits into the Parnham Lane pump station. And as a result of that, we actually needed to go and undertake some uh, cleaning of the wet well at Parnham Lane pump station. Uh, what we didn't actually realise at the time is that the uh, off level for the Parnham Lane pump station actually caused that 300 flow to go back up the 300 pipe. So we actually believe the source of the flat fat deposits um, occurred about a year ago when that issue occurred. And it was into the Parnham Lane pump station, yet there was um, some flow or fat push back up the line that wasn't cleaned up at the time. Um, so we believe it is a one-off um, occurrence. Um, the, so that's the first part of your question. The second part of your question is um, why, why is why is that important? Um, well, we've actually gone through and had a closer look at what is the effect of the fat in that line. And it, it does actually cause surcharge in the pipe up along Ahoka Road. So it would actually push the levels in the sewer line higher um, up, excuse me, <coughs> in the vicinity of Ranui Mews, which would um, make the Ranui Mews more prone to having issues with their toilets. So that's why we're, look, why we're looking at that. Just just to clarify then, so did we find the source of the fat deposit or did we just, do we know where that came from 12 months ago for it to push back up there? Did we, do, what have we done about that? Uh, yes, we did. Um, it was related to one of our trade waste agreements and um, at the time they had an issue with their on-site system and they made us aware of it immediately. And um, so, yeah, it was a known one-off issue. Thank you. Councillor Williams. Yes, um, on that page, um, what is it, 17, you've got all the green underways. Yeah, um, how many of those are actually oh, physically sorry. starting or is it just paperwork um, and planning? Neville, Neville, do you want to mute, please? This is not the... Um, uh... Sorry, Paul. Yeah, no, I'll wait for... Yep. Yeah. Did you get that, Kelly? Uh, yes. So um, th these are all underway, meaning that we have actually physically been out to site, undertaken um, an assessment, and we've um, got to the point of um, you know, having a clear scope that we need to work through. So but they are um, 
you'll see that there's four in the um, table there that are yet are not yet started. So they are ones that you know are more in the category of a desktop assessment. So the ones that are underway are ones where we've physically been out to site. We've actually got contractors out um, doing work and people um, who have submitted those service requests should have actually seen um, or heard from people physically doing the work. So you're probably going to um, know what my next question is. Have we got enough, have the contractors we've asked got enough time to do all that before our winter strike? Because to me, there's seemed to be quite a lot of work there and not enough contractors what we employ. Can they do that job before the, the big um, rains start coming? That's the important question. Um, yeah, it is a very good question. And that was one of the reasons that we've packaged up the CCTV work. Um, you know, to, to make it a bigger package of work that they can get their teeth into. Um, maintenance work is probably, uh, it's probably actually more um, uh, being managing a lot of smaller little projects with our existing maintenance contractors. So making sure that um, culverts have been cleaned, making sure drains have been inspected, um, so that is part of the flood team work is to make sure that has um, been undertaken. At this point in time, we're not finding um, any um, significant issues with uh, getting contractors. It's actually at this point in time, the, um, the, the flood team itself, like, you know, working through all of these service requests. Mr. Cleary, you want to comment? Um, yeah, I just want to add there will so um, there will be a number of these where there might be some immediate works that we can do, and so um, where we can do that, and if obvious physical maintenance works, um, that's fine. There will also be some where we might be able to do some immediate work, but there's actually some longer term issues and they might require quite substantial capital upgrades. Um, and they, and some of those will come to the annual plan um, and some will come to future long-term plans or be subject to future investigations. So um, just, I think that might help answer part of your question, Councillor Williams, in terms of, we're not gonna fix all of these problems to the full extent before winter. Some may actually be um, level of service uh, expectations that, can't be met or can't be met without quite substantial capital works and upgrades. Um, and some of those might need to be out into the future. Just as an example, we've, um, if you think back to 2014, we had quite substantial flooding then. Um, we car again carried out a whole pile of immediate work. Um, we've been co continuing with the capital works program. And probably the biggest of those is the um, Kaipo Shovel Ready projects that are happening now. Um, so, uh, you know, so, so just I don't want you to have the impression that we can fix all of these problems before winter. Some of them are long standing um, issues that, you know, that, are, that go back decades, um, and some can be fixed more immediately. But there's certainly what. Um, will be some that will take longer to get around. The, the question was mainly asked um, regards of whether the maintenance, like for example, and just before winter, I'm not likely to hop into my car and go and find, for example, a shopping trolley jammed under a bridge blocking a, a drain and all that type of thing because we haven't done the maintenance on it. There's a maintenance on that existing drains. Will they be sorted before our rainy period starts coming? That was the question, really. Well, I, I, I guess at the end of the day, uh, Councillor Williams, our staff are going to do the very, very, very best that they can to to ensure that, uh, that, that we don't have these mishaps. So I, I, I realise that, but the, but it was it was, it was um, aimed at the contractors. Have we got enough to do all what our staff need to be done to clean the drains? And that was what Jared was saying before. If we haven't, we need to bring in some extra contractors, and we don't. We shouldn't be bringing those contractors in after it starts raining. 
that drains need to be cleared before that before the floods arrive. All right. So I, I, I'm pretty sure you've made your, your point both at the conclusion of the minutes and with regard to this report, and I'm sure that our staff will be taking those comments on board. Mr Mayor or Deputy Mayor, you still got your hand up? Was there something else from you guys? Yes, yes there yes, is. And then, uh, then, then, then Councillor Mowings. Thank, thank you, Mr Chair. I just say I agree entirely with Councillor Williams's question, and I would like to, to know that those items that are immediate issues are being resolved and can be resolved. And so, Jared and Kelly, um, I think we need some regular reporting to us to make sure that those capacity issues are under control uh, with those maintenance issues that have been addressed. It's been raised by elected members here many times now. Uh, so I, I do support us getting more information on that. So maybe a weekly update to us to keep us under up to date with what's occurring would be appreciated. Uh, Why Cuckoo, I'd like to know have we connected with the residents down there following uh, our meeting, Jared, we had earlier in the year, we gave some undertakings. I've read the report. I'm just not sure if there's been communication that's gone back uh, to those residents uh, that raised those issues. Uh, and Ranui News is something that I view as a top priority. And I'd like to, to, to make, keep, if you can in that weekly update, please make sure that we're kept up to speed with what's going on. I don't want there to be issues that run you use, uh, like what we had last time around. It's, these are our pensioners, they deserve the uh, best service from us, and um, I just want to make sure that we're keeping on top of that, please. All right, so obviously it'd be a good discussion to have in management team as well, wouldn't it? Uh, right. Councillor Mealix. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just on page 17 on your table, of um, focus areas, um, just regarding the Ahoka Rural, uh, the three properties that you've listed there. Um, I'm pleased to see that you're underway with two of the three, but of the one that you haven't yet started on Mill Road, um, I know that they were contacted after the flooding event and I'm grateful for that, um, but has that resident been contacted recently? Are they aware of the status of the investigation with regard to their property? Because the um, stream did get a little bit closer than we would like to see. And um, yeah, or d does is this particular um, property one of those ones that falls into the category that Jared ju um, just discussed that it's a bit bigger and wider and possibly bigger scope than we can deal with right now? Wh whereabouts is is one seven five at this moment? Uh, so that one, uh, Dan Lewis has made direct contact with the landowner there and um, has already been to site. Um, there has been some initial advice provided there, and I understand subsequent meetings are uh, uh, in plan to in process to go back and liaise with them further. Thank you. So, so the resident is up to date then with with the status of their um, request. Great, great. Thank you. Mayor or Deputy Mayor, you still got your hand up? Is this one yes, you because I didn't get an answer. With respect, Mr Chair, I have raised these issues at management team. I'd just like to have an answer to the points that I made, please. Thank you. Um, look, yeah, the uh, issues, um, you've, you, yes, you're quite right. Uh, those um, issues have been raised by the Mayor, um, the Deputy Mayor, um, a number of councillors. Um, so um, there were effectively to the, your three questions, the answer is yes. Um, so I uh, agree we should be giving a more, we're happy to give a more regular update on progress, um, specifically uh, on these issues. Um, and I think perhaps that will help uh, with um, keeping you informed. If there are, I suppose, if there are any um, individual drains or individual concerns that councillors have, please let us know. Um, you know, um, let either me know or Kelly know, and we can make sure that they are followed up. Um, but in, uh, but you're very, we're very happy, and I think it is appropriate, given the time of the year that we're now in, that we should be giving you um, a, a weekly update uh, on, on issues. So, uh, because you're quite right, we're heading right into um, winter. Right, I can't see any more indications of questions. So we've got some recommendations. Somebody prepared to move? Moved, Councillor Redmond. No? Oh, you got another um, question? 
It was a question, yes. I, I'm not permitted to move at your uh, meeting, oh. Mr Chair. Yeah. Um, just the, the questions that have been raised. Um, do the existing contractors, um, or perhaps put it this way, are they meeting their obligations under the contract in terms of levels of service, especially in relation to maintenance? Look, I think it's fair to say that um, there is a backlog at the moment and that the um, water operations team and drainage team are working really closely with um, the contractor to prior prioritise the work and to make sure um, that we are getting on top of that backlog as quickly as possible coming up to winter. Um, they have looked at how they can um, reorder their own workforce um, and the, their subcontractors, as well as getting an external help to get them back on top of the, um, the work as well. I think in terms of the um, levels of service, so that is something that as part of the ongoing meetings that we have with them, you know, we're, we're um, always reviewing and rating their performance to make sure, um, you know, we're, we're getting the um, best value from, from that maintenance contract. Uh, I, th I think it's just always challenging when we have um, these kinds of seasons where we do have a lot of rainfall and we do have a relatively warm summer, um, having excessive weed growth, um, having issues with drains that sometimes uh, only needed to be cleaned once a year. Some of them were having to clean three times every year. So it's, it, it is making it a bit more challenging. Um, and I think from this, we're just making our own internal processes as well as cords processes, um, improving them such that we're providing a... Um, a better level of service for our customers. Thank you. If, if they're not meeting their contractual levels of service, what are the financial implications? Uh, so a lot of the, there's some of the drains that they main, maintain, they, this, it's a yearly rate. So irrespective of how many times they maintain them, um, uh, they, that's, we pay a set amount each year. Then there's other drains that we pay for on a time and expense basis. So if um, if it's a, a, a wetter, warmer year, then we'll end up paying more for maintenance of those drains. Um, we don't have any penalty payments within the contract when they... Um, they get behind on certain drains. They're just then put onto a list that we then say to them, look, you know, this, this is the drain that has, um, needs to be maintained. And then we track the list to make sure um, that it's getting off that list as soon as possible. Thank you. Councillor Williams. Yes, um, uh, I'm quite a wee bit um, worried about sometimes when you said drains they'd be cleaned two or three times instead of once, because I understand if they weed rate them and don't actually take the roots of the reeds and the, the actual salt away from the bottom of the drains properly, it's only a couple of months and they, that weeds grows back quicker. Are they actually cleaning, the, are we going out and checking to make sure they're cleaning the drains properly and to a proper satisfactory situation? Um, because it's only natural, I've got a wee pond here, if you weed rake the weed out the top of it, it'll grow really quick because of the weather conditions. So you've actually got to dig out the roots and the bottom of the drains to clear them properly, which um, it's just wondering whether we're actually checking to make sure that it work's been done properly. Uh, yes, and we'll also be um, inputting to the method that they do use to undertake the maintenance of the drain. So, you know, we'll work with them to make sure that the method of cleaning is the most appropriate. 
Right, so as I mentioned, we've got the report with the recommendations. Somebody prepared to move. Move Councillor Williams, second and Councillor Blackie. Councillor Williams? Yes, no, it's a wee bit concerning this um, report because um, I just personally, I like to see us on top of it. And obviously we are not quite on top of the um, cleaning and everything yet. And um, I think if we can't get on top of it, we need to bring in some more exterior contractors to do it. But I think we need to get on with it because there's nothing worse than water and we can't control water. And if the drains look dirty, the rate powers are going to come, to come back to us and say, hey, my drain's not cleaned, that's why my house is getting near flooded. And um, if the drains are cleaned, well, they can't come back to us and say that. So I think it's very important. Thank you. Councillor, Black Councillor Blackie? No, nothing to add. Mr Mayor? Oh, thank you. Um, just uh, look, can I say thank you to the staff for this report. It's, it's helpful to have this here, but that more regular reporting, thank you, Jared and Kelly, for agreeing to do that. But we, when we're fronted residents, as a number of us have over these events, these issues are actually really important uh, to them and to know that there's a process in place for it. There's a heightened expectation because of the number of weather events we're going and it's putting a lot of pressure on our staff and our resources. So it's just to keep, from, uh, from my point of view, I think it's really important that we keep a picture on this and uh, are kept informed. And if there is additional resource um, required, Personally, I'm more than happy to support that because when you're fronting residents at a time of a weather event, uh, you know, and a number of us went and visited those last time around, it's a pretty concerned uh, and uh, rightly concerned about things. We've got work programs coming, a significant stormwater uh, project in Kaipoi, which is going to resolve a great deal of these issues. Um, but we, we, we keep experiencing this unseasonal weather which then puts the pressure on. As I mentioned, the issues in my cookie that's been a number of years now, we need to make sure our, what we're looking at is communicated effectively with the residents so that it addresses their issues. Brand new news, we've already mentioned that. That is a concern. And I do want, personally want to see that resolved. It's a top priority. And um, the other matters that we've raised, looked through CUST last time round, that uh, has been logged now and hopefully, the, you know, these are things that need to be programmed and worked, but a number of these issues have cropped up a number of times. So we just need to make sure we're on top of it. But, and this reporting does certainly help us, but that more regular reporting will reassure us uh, that that work is occurring. So look, just to acknowledge um, the team, I know there's a lot of work going on, but we also need to be making sure uh, that we're kept informed because the heightened expectation that there is in the community then comes back to us to be able to answer those uh, questions at various times. It's our job to make sure we're satisfied that that's under control. Thank you, Mr Chair. Councillor Stewart. Uh, thank you. I just want to endorse some of the um, comments. Um, I'm in touch with several of the um, um, uh, residents on the on the. Uh, further investigations list and while I note that um, the report says that they've been contacted <laughs> they've told me they haven't so um, I'm really concerned that a communications um, really steps up here and that we as councillors are kept across it and thoroughly endorse um, a weekly update I think the worst thing is that um, you get it in the air from residents uh, told told something from the staff and they don't match um, so I think it's really important not only that the councillors also are across it but uh, as I said earlier um, the um, website that is meant to be informing everybody of um, what is happening is really easy to get um, access to it isn't um, and I would just we have to do better um, on uh, communications of whatever we are doing. It needs to be regularly updated and very, very easy to access. Uh, because um, as Councillor Williams has said, we're heading into um, winter. And if we've got a whole list of things, which we have got a whole list of things still to address, 
and I've I've had um, yesterday at Anzac had another issue I didn't know anything about, um, but I've passed that on to um, to Kelly this morning, and um, it, I, I hope that um, in fact it's one of the one of the um, flooding issues that um, was easily resolved um, uh, at the time. It doesn't seem to have um, been communicated back to. Um, the property that was affected, if that's the case. I just reinforce the need for absolutely, ve well, very, very good communications. Thank you. I can't see anybody else. So I'll go back to Councillor Williams, write a reply. No, no reply. So I'll put it. All those in favour, raise your hand, say aye. All those against, it's carried. Thank you for that. So I have no uh, correspondence. So we'll move on to item seven, which is uh, reports, uh, 7.1. Thank you for that. And I'll speak to this since we no longer have Kathy here. This is uh, uh, the effectively, the there's a bit of a passing lane at the tram road, Early's Road intersection, and there have been some issues with large vehicles parking there on uh, blocking visibility. So we're looking to formalize that as a, with a no stopping restriction. Any questions? Somebody prepared to move. You got no, a question, I, Wendy? Um, just a question, please, with where, you, you, where you've got that bit of excess way for a for a truck to park, which is blocking, of course, blocking the way. But where else can can um, the truckies park their trailers when they're perhaps going off to get some other stock? Um, we that, that, <clears> don't that's really the issue. Yeah, and and uh, we haven't identified specifically freight locations. I think looking at a freight strategy is something we have um, sort of pegged as as a near term effort, uh, but that location specifically has a traffic safety impact because it does block visibility, whereas there are a number of other locations. So again, we haven't specifically cataloged them and identified them to truckies to pull off. Um, recognize there is a need for further coordination on that. And that is something yes. we have picked. Yeah, thank you, because that is a real issue that they do not have a place to park over. Thank you. Councillor Williams. My question was pretty much the same as um, Councillor Duties was those trucks are parking there for a reason. Um, if they've got nowhere else to park, are they going to park in a place where there's not so much width and create a bigger problem further on down Tram Road? That's a wee bit of concern. If you you know, do you know why they're parking there? Uh, I, based on the comments we received, it was not targeted a specific company or specific truck, so I cannot speak to exactly where they are coming from or going to. Um, yeah. Councillor Doody. Yeah, they're parking there because they, they've got a, a, a double carriage. Uh, they've filled up one with stock and they're going to get another load and then couple them together and off they go. If that's what it's, that's the only reason why they've done that is because it's rather than taking a truck and a trailer as well, that they can just put one aside and go pick up another lot. That is the reason why, and that's probably why you do need to have a little talk to the truckies about that in that area, thanks. So we've got a recommendation, somebody prepared to move? I'll move it from the chair, somebody prepared to second? Second and Councillor Williams, self-explanatory. I've got nothing further to add. Councillor Williams? Yeah, no, I've got not really much to add apart from exactly what um, Councillor Duty said. They, they will park their truck somewhere else, and I just hope they don't park it in a, uh, a worse spot um, for the traffic. That's, that's my big concern. So I don't know how many other places there are to park there, so I'd hate to be moving something here now and finding out we're making a worse problem somewhere else down the road. Can't see any other members, no reply. I'll put it, all those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. 7.2. <clears throat> 
Um, and I'll take the report as read. I'll just add, since this was passed on to the community board, uh, 17th of March, we sent out an information notice discussing the potential no stopping change to the owners of the five properties affected um, and have had no feedback from that point. Um, the original design didn't include a curb and channel on the west side, which is one of the big constraints. However, that's um, sort of the result that came out of the, the consent process with the developer, as my understanding goes. Um, and so that is that is uh, the circumstance we have out there on Bond Street, which leads to a narrow carriageway and, and a struggle for providing space for parking. Mr. Clear, you want to read something? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, just to add to um, what uh, Shane has talked about, there are a number of physical constraints on this site. So um, if you look at the photo in um, page 49, uh, that shows you the uh, where the van sort of parked up on the um, curb. There's a large hedge there um, that actually goes out uh, quite a long way into the road reserve. Um, that hedge is a shelter belt for the council reserve um, and uh, we effectively from a, um, a reserve point of view need to have that shelter belt there. So we've had discussions with um, the uh, staff um, um, uh, from our community and recreation team. Um, potentially there could be a longer term option there to perhaps duplicate that hedge before bringing it down, but that would be a very long-term issue. There's only a small number of properties along here. Um, and there's really, a, and you need, we need the, the curb and channel for drainage purposes, because um, if there hadn't been curb and channel there, possibly it would have been easier for people to pull over a bit. Um, but the developer required that for their providing drainage, and we wanted to get a good drainage outcome on the subdivision. It's this subdivision has got some significant drainage challenges, um, and there was quite a lot of backwards and forwards uh, all the way through the um, consent process on, on this uh, uh, between the uh, developers, engineers, and our engineers to try and find a compromise that worked the best. Um, look, we think the best time that the owners of those properties, um, remembering that they're either under construction now uh, or haven't yet. Been finished. Um, are being have been advised uh, of that, um, and none of them have come back. Uh, which was the strategy that was endorsed by the community board in terms of the consultation method with them. Um, it's one of these things we don't want to leave until residents move in, and then we're changing the environment for them. Um, and you know they might form a habit of starting to drive on the park on the road. So it's just trying to get ahead of the game here. Um, so that hopefully that will answer some of the questions that might have been coming on this. Councillor Williams? Yeah, I think that sort of answered my question. I was just making sure that all the property owners have been consulted on because that was a question that came back from the, I believe, from the uh, community board. And at that stage, the people hadn't been consulted on. That was also, they definitely have been consulted on now. Is that correct? Everyone. My understanding is that... Um... There, are, there was, I believe, perhaps maybe one house potentially occupied. The rest are all either under construction or have not started. So we have, we did by post um, notice to, to consult on it to the one resident there and the other four owners who are in other locations. So, Council Redmond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think I was the one who raised at the board um, that the owners had not been consulted at that stage. So that was why the recommendation, the last uh, part of it is as it is. So I'm pleased that, um, that they have now been consulted and it appears there are no issues. Um, my question is, um, given the width of the grass berm, if that had been narrower, there would have been room for on-street parking. So do we know why the road is quite narrow and um, the boom quite wide when it would have been maybe preferable to have it round the other way? Uh, look, I'm happy to answer that. Um, the boom is not particularly um, wide. Um, we do need to have booms 
uh, for a number of reasons. Um, one of the things it's not good to have roads up very close to boundaries. So particularly when people put up high sided fences. Um, the other thing is services go in the berm. Um, and what you're seeing there is not a, uh, the trees go well out into the road reserve. So um, ultimately, the, um, you know, that was one of the constraints that tried, was tried to be resolved was to try and um, achieve an outcome that allowed for a berm. Uh, future proof that so ultimately if that hedge issue is resolved and that uh, if it needs to be resolved in the future if, if it needs to um, then it'll be manageable without any parking on that road it's actually quite adequate to service that area um, but it's just it's not uh, um, so th those were considered Joanne I see you've got your hand up um, you might want to add something to that yep I'll see it too thanks Joanne um, yeah and um... <coughs> Just to add to what Jared has stated, uh, there's a stormwater, large stormwater pipe which runs along underneath uh, the berm area, which needed the additional cover. Um, so the the road couldn't, because of the depth to protect the pipe, couldn't be directly over top of the stormwater pipe, um, and the outlet level was constrained. So that was one of the factors that needed to be considered into the design. Thank you. I'm happy. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a recommendation. Is somebody prepared to move? Uh, Mr. Mayor or Deputy Mayor, one or the other? Yes, I'm happy to move. All right, and seconded Councillor Stewart. Well, actually, I, I'm sorry, I'm a bit um, slow, but it was, I've got a question here, um, which I'd like to ask. Well, I ask, ask the question. Yeah, well, by the time I got my reaction, my hand up, uh, you'd moved on to moving it. Question. Thank you. Um, Sefton Town is um, split with its rating. Environment Canterbury does the rating for everything except um, roading, um, road drainage, and I'm and the when Joanne brought up the fact that there's a a pipe underneath that'll be stormwater pipe pipe that is rated for by Environment Canterbury. Um, I'm just raising the question here, um, is this split of responsibilities when in fact you've got development occurring in Sefton with no town centre plan or town growth plan that I'm aware of, the way to go? Mr Cleary. That is a really good question. Um, and it's certainly something, and it is, I have certainly turned my mind to. Um, the, uh, well, I the can answer it, and it's not a good, it's not no, a no, good I, outcome. I will answer it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a real challenge. Um, Sefton has, its existing stormwater system is pretty much non-existent. Um, it's, right. a, it's a series of road culverts, um, vehicle crossings that have been put in over the years with undersized pipes. Um, uh, there's no drainage rating area in Sefton. Um, and it's one of these areas. Well, there that, is. There is a tiny oh, little sorry, there rated is, yeah, area not, for. Not as we know them normally. No, so there's not the environment as we know them. <laughs> yeah. So, certainly not a Waimakari District Council urban drainage um, system. So, it is one that. Potentially, if there's further development, this is going to continue to be more and more of an issue. Um, and it'll come down to drainage levels of service in terms of uh, pedestrian access. Uh, so there, it, there's actually um, quite a challenge for the community of Sefton in the future um, and at the moment. And so when it's been sort of a semi-rural town, that level of service has been acceptable. Um, this is a new development, and I did point out there was some quite significant drainage challenges on this site. Um, it's on a, um, an area that we do have um, a fairly steep gradient. Um, you get quite an or orographic effect, and then when there's an easterly um, air uh, movement in, in wet weather, where, where there is often quite a lot of water dumped upstream of Sefton, and that's hence why there is that Environment Canterbury rating area, because there is an issue for, for major storm events, um, particularly on the 
uh, western side of Sefton. Um, but look, that, that is certainly a future um, challenge for the council, whether we want to, and that, and that may be something we talk to the committee about, go out and consult with the residents and do they want to um, try and to get the council involved more, have maybe something slightly, slightly more formal, possibly a, a Waimaka area district rating area for the area. Um, and then that would um, ultimately lead to a series of capital works uh, over the years, but it's it would be it's it, you know, it would be quite challenging trying to retrofit urban stormwater services into what was uh, the a town given the way it was developed in the past. So I, I, I genuinely thought that was a really good question because it's certainly something we've been turning our minds to. Right. So it was moved, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry, you had a question, Councillor Ward, or are you seconding? Oh, well, I'd ha have a weak question. Um, you've just raised, um, over the weekend, it was raised with me by a, re uh, by a resident of Sefton that with the new subdivision and some growth in Sefton, what is planned for footpaths for access, particularly for the school children to the Sefton school? Mr. Cleary or Mr. Binder? I'll let, uh, I'll, um... Joanne McBride will answer Joanne. that one of the distances. Yeah. yeah, again, a good question. Um, Sefton isn't currently rated for footpaths. It's a little bit like uh, the stormwater management areas and the general um, look and feel in Sefton for uh, facilities is... Um, more of a settlement area that doesn't have paths, so we wouldn't be looking to install footpaths within Sefton area. It was just raised the fact that the children are walking on the road to go to school, so that was raised with me actually yesterday. So um, I, I thought it was valid, valid, relevant to ask the question at this time. All right, are there, before I go back to the mayor, are there any more questions that are going to pop up? No, Mr. Mayor, you moved. Somebody second. A second of Councillor Williams, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just briefly, just say I support the recommendation. Um, it's an issue that perhaps, at time of subdivision and consent, it was a matter of perhaps it should have been picked up on. It's now one that does need to be resolved because uh, it has left a situation there as we're aware. It's been to the community board and has been recommended by the board. Uh, the concerns were um, uh, raised with me by other elected members, and I just want to say that I um, I, I did pass that uh, pass it on to Mr. Cleary, and I appreciate Jared, you um, and uh, Shane providing and, and Joanne as additional answers here today. The fact that the residents have been uh, communicated with, if they hadn't have been probably would have been looking for a slightly different recommendation because I think it's really important when we have effects that occur that we do communicate effectively with our residents to make sure that they are um, notified and aware of what uh, the consequences are. But look, it's a, I think it makes sense, this, uh, this direction, and so I'm supportive of it. Thank you. Councillor Williams. Councillor Stewart. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm quite relatively comfortable to support this, but I do raise the question um, or raise the comment following my question that um, this council is ticking off development um, in Sefton. There are three um, rating areas for drainage that Environment Canterbury um, manage or administer. Uh, Sefton Town, which has got a, probably a budget of something like fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, it's it's absolutely minimal. Um, then there's the wider Sefton Ashley area, and then there's the Ashley area proper. Um, we are ticking off development here, and and this is an example of a small development um, which has got considerable challenges, as has been outlined here. And there are more to come here for Sefton. Um, I just think it should be on the list of um, uh, a briefing. We have no, there's no town centre plan for it. It's um, it's a popular area uh, for some people to uh, to move to, and it has serious serious 
drainage issues. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what the process is. I'm not going to um, add a, um, an amendment or anything here, but be warned, um, councillors and staff, we need to turn our attention to this township. It does have has no services. It has major resource issues. Um, uh, and um, we are ticking off development in it. So uh, that's, um, I would like, I don't know what the process is, um, to um, get a, uh, a, a more comprehensive look at the growth of this town. Thank you. Thank you. I can't see anybody else. Mr. Mayor, any reply? Uh, just, just briefly to say that um, we have signalled already our intention to look into drainage right across the district. So that's next term. We've discussed that a couple of times this term of council and that's our agreed position. I think what Councillor Duty's just raised in the chat is something quite relevant, which is a perhaps a, a township plan or a discussion with the town at some particular point. But that should be part of that holistic uh, work that's being uh, considered. I wouldn't want to see it done piecemeal. Um, and, and we are looking at uh, uh, the broader issues there in Sefton with the community um, uh, facility as well, which we've committed resource to. So it's part of the growth of, of, of um, Sefton. Years ago, we did um, work within both Ahoka, Cust and West Eaton, which ended up with plans. So I think that's a, actually a really good suggestion by uh, Councillor D. There are really good exercises that we went through and that identified the sort of things like Councillor Ward's talking about around uh, footpaths. And I hope we ended up with footpaths extended uh, for the school students. So I think the growth uh, that's coming there is, and it's clearly desirable for people that want to move there, this is part of the growth of that, and we do need to consider that. So consideration of a plan and then those wider servicing issues would be very helpful to have, and we should start to... Uh, get a work program together to um, identify those and discuss what that might be, particularly having that conversation very openly with the community about what they would like to see. Thank you. I'll put it. All those in favour, raise your hand. Say aye. Anybody against? That's carried. Thank you. So we're going to item eight. So we've got some matters for information, 8.1, 8.2 and 8.3. Is somebody prepared to move all three of those? Was that your hand, Councillor Ward? Yep, move Councillor Ward, seconded. I'll second from the chair. I'd like to talk about some of these things first, if we can. You got questions? Yes. Yeah, questions? The, the quest report for decision, um, we, we got to the... Um, the screw bridge one yet? Well, we were going to move all three, Councillor Williams, but if you've got questions, Councillor Ward, Councillor Ward and I will hold off. Yeah, I've got questions, yes, I have. Right. Um, on, on the screw bridge one, um, would it not be sensible just to spend the money on the electronic signage first and just see... Um, whether that solves roughly the bit of the problem because it's the, the cheapest part of it and that's probably the main part of um, doing that contract. So we can always, if we needed to, do the others afterwards, but surely um, we don't need to spend... The ratepayers are struggling now with money. It just, just seems to me like we're throwing money after money after things like this when the important thing is to reasonably slow the cars down, and that signage is going to be quite adequate in my book to do so. Joanne? Yeah, um, good question, Paul. It was is something that we've been through as part of the design process for the bridge, um, and as part of that design, we've put in place a number of measures, or we, we have taken to UNR, um, which has previously been approved a plan which included a number of measures to support lower speeds uh, through those er through that area and across the bridge. Our recommendation is the signs would not be adequate on their own and that has been through a safe independent safety audit process 
and supported the work that we've put forward. So um, can you explain to me why just the signs wouldn't be adequate enough? Um, because I'm, I'm quite lost about it, and um, I would have thought we would have been told about that in the briefing, why signs alone weren't enough, when I personally was been at the meetings and I thought the signs were pretty much going to be it, the basic, the major part of it, and there may have been a wee bit of titivating, but I didn't realise that the signs was probably the cheapest part of the whole program. So as part of slowing um, traffic down, it, it often takes a combination of factors um, to help get the slowing of speed. So what we had um, in the design that went to UNR and was approved included um, some more of a threshold treatment and changes to the road marking. So that included some curbs around the signs um, we need a little bit of pavement widening at the signs to make sure we can accommodate them safely behind the edge line so they will be protected. Um, and the, even the road marking through there, putting in the wide centre line helps narrow the lanes. And that in itself is helps what helps achieve the reduction in speed. So just doing the signs alone, in our opinion, is not, not enough to get the speed reduction that we're looking for. I haven't probably got a problem with just white lines and a bit of painting on the roads, but you know, another hundred and thirty odd thousand dollars is getting up there. That was all I was thinking. Any further questions, Councillor Doody? Um, just a question on this one: um, what is what is more valuable? The, the the health of, of a person that may have had accident there, their life, or is it the um, just saving money on on doing extra work to make safeguard it? Yeah, well, I think I think it's a bit of a, a more of a point making. No, I did ask the question. Well, I, I can I, answer I, that. No, well, no, 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 we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> the point, the, the point's been made, and uh, we're not going that way. Any <laughs> other questions? So, Councillor Paul, you still got your hand up? Yeah, Larry. Yep. All right, thank you very much. Um, so, Councillor Ward, you're prepared to move. Before you still the same? Absolutely. I support anything that um, makes well, it on. clear. I'll, I'll, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> now you can, you can speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Can I speak now? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> so I support um I'm I'm really worried about the school bridge and I support anything that will lower the speeds and, and the awareness of people to slow down and keep their keep on the right side of the road to avoid any um uh any accidents happening. And I can tell you um it's not very pretty. We had an accident last night at a, at our home when a man went to sleep and and came and and belted into a vehicle at our home which was parked up our drive. So it's so easy to have bad drivers in accidents, and I think anything we can do to slow them down and to make um, make things safer is what we need to do. Thank you. I've got nothing to add. Anybody else? No. I'll put it. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against, that's carried. We go on to portfolio updates. Councillor Williams. No, uh, you're muted, you're you muted, you. Paul. I shall start again. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's really good to see the staff finally um, working on upgrading the maintenance on our levels of our gravel roads around the district. Myself and Andrew Wells have been worked hard to see this happen as the feedback we were receiving from the ratepayers on the gravel roads suggested the roads needed to be upgraded and it's really good to encouraging to see the staff actually starting to listen and um, it, I understand it's all happening so that's that's a really good thing to come up. I am, although disappointed with the land transport on their funding systems, that's not helping councils keep their roads maintained to the level it's required, especially when I see the level of what I believe is such a waste. 
of the LTSA money on, um, for example, $3.4 million on some of this advertising, which I find is very similar to the um, the Three Waters um, advertising. Um, the level of the maintenance around roads and what have you isn't up to stage. And I agree 100% with what the Automobile Association is putting out about the, um, the roads and everything. So I'm very disappointed with the level of funding we're receiving from government on... Um, doing our road maintenance and what have you. Um, we've got an update. Fernside Pavements Rehabilitation Work is now completed and the road is reopened. Um, the pavement rehabilitation site at Rangura Wood End between Golf Links and Smarts Road has been delayed until next season due to temperature dropping and staff shortages due to COVID. Some holding work has been carried out in the interim. The chip sealing program has been completed for the year. Footpath renewals are underway on East Belt. Curb and channel renewals are currently underway on Durham Street and also on a short, short section of East Belt above Wales Street. A report is coming to the Council in May on the February flood event and the options for the Butchers Road um, pipe culvert, which has failed, and grading and metalling of the roads is coming. Um, on the culvert on Butchers Road, I don't know, Jared. maybe answer that. We're going to get a bit of a briefing on it soon. I'm very, very disappointed that um, I believe such a reasonable small item um, is taking so long to get resolved and we've got a road closed. It's like we're in a third world country and even a third world country would have that road open by now. So um, I'm, I'm hoping we'll get a good briefing on it and um, find us some way of even temporary getting that road opening. And that's all for now, unless Jared wants to comment on that culvert. Um, yes, I do. Uh, we have a report coming to the council um, on that. So the uh, council meeting, there's a comprehensive report on the drainage, uh, sorry, the roading um, issues, uh, particularly associated with the number of service requests we've had in the weather. Um, and that has a um, covers the culvert in there. So um, we're happy to, um, I think, We'll give that report to councillors as part of the agenda and we'll be happy to take any questions on that. If councillors want to get hold of either me or Joanne um, prior to the meeting to discuss that report, we're really happy to have um, those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Otherwise, we can um, take any questions at the council meeting as well. Thank Councillor you. Ward, did you have a quick question? Yes, so just a quick question. In your research, Paul, with your team, um, did you... Um, for the maintenance, that were you looking at the conditions of Carlton Road, Wrights Road, and Doncaster Roads? Um, pretty much, we went covered, try to cover as many roads as we could, and we um, uh, just pretty much, basically, um, most of the roads of of lacking in a bit of um, top dressing and what have you, and some of them got the big cluster boulders sticking through it. So, it's it's really. Um, I don't think as a councillor we actually should be going out um, full time inspecting all the roads all the time but it was necessary for myself and Andrew and we did um, some roads and I also went out for councillor duty around the Oxford roads and inspecting some which is good um, but I think it's the staff need to get on top of some of the areas and yes all, of, all the gravel roads pretty much from Waimakaroo needs a bit of attention. I'll send an email to you, Jared, and um, with um, some concerns of truck drivers that have been speaking to me. Councillor Mealings. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Paul, thank you for uh, mentioning the Butchers Road culvert. Um, I have gotten quite a lot of feedback on that, and um, I do share your frustration that um, our roads aren't able to get fixed as quickly as we would like them to be. However, I would just like to pass on a bouquet to Joanne McBride. Um, I had a constituent reach out to me and ask if it was possible for it to be made at least um, available for pedestrian foot, tra foot traffic and cycles. And um, not only did she entertain the thought, but she made it happen. And so at least um, those who are riding bikes and, and walking through there can actually get over that culvert now. And I just really want to thank you, Joanne, for going the extra mile, speaking with the resident and going out, looking at it and making that happen. Because whilst it's not our road fixed, 
we do miss the road, um, people can still use it in a limited capacity, which is capable right now, you know, which is possible right now. So thank you for that. And just wanted to say in front of my colleagues that you were amazing. So cheers. Yeah. And I did get feedback on that um, uh, walkway, uh, cycleway as well. Some of the local residents here are quite upset that they thought we've spent more money trying to get a cycleway up and going there than what it would have been to temporary fix the whole culvert system on a temporary basis to get cars in their own cars and saving some petrol and everything um, going around. So Okay, I, I'm, yeah, so, so no, 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 no. we're, we're, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. We're going to move on to 9.2. Councillor Stewart. Uh, thank you. Um, very little to report apart from the um, working through the list of um, flood-related um, remedies that we had as part of this agenda. Um, and, and as I said, having more come to light, um, which I've communicated um, through to Kelly, uh, just to understand where some of that is at. Um, my um, hearings panel on the stock water review bylaw still waiting to see um, the communications package that is coming from that. I would like to um, have that accelerated. Um, it, um, we, it was very clear from the hearings that uh, many um, people on the stock water race, water race system um, did not understand um, their obligations. Uh, and, and the opportunities that they had. So, um, and this was last year, I tend to remind people that we had these hearings, I think it was no, November. So yeah, so it's getting on for um, six months since the hearing and I haven't seen a draft of the communications package. So looking forward to that. Apart from that, um, all good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. So we go on to utilities, Councillor Williams. Hey again. Um, I haven't got much to report on this at the moment. Um, the sewer side of it, the, the botulum, the, the, um, the waste plant down at um, Cracky Beach has been less than what we've had in previous years. So that's actually, you know, looking quite good. We've had a few deaths of birds, but nowhere near like we've had before. So, and the weather's been warmer, so that's quite encouraging. Um, with the water supplies, the only concern I personally have on it is we temporarily chlorinated some of the Kaipoi's water when we had a wee bit of um, a thoughts of a problem in it. There wasn't a problem as it turned out, but the chlorine in the water does affect some of the pipes. And I've, I have got a concern whether if we're forced to chlorinate the whole of Waimakariri, um, you know, Kaipoi and Rangura supplies, we actually might uh, run into bigger problems with um, discoloration and... Um, residue and the pipes that may get affected by the chlorine. But apart from that, that's me for today. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll go on to me with the uh, waste. Um, so there's been a minor issue at Sutherland's pit. Um, Kitty's working on the possibility of putting some camera surveillance uh, in there just to make sure that the uh, people who do offload actually offload what is supposed to go in there and not something oh. else. Um, waste management. Um, as you're probably aware, uh, they've been sold to an Australian owner in Ingenio Investment. Um, we've been told we shouldn't see any significant changes. The uh, chief executive was at our uh, Zoom joint landfill committee meeting, which was held on the 4th of April. And on that meeting on the 4th of April with regard to uh, Cape Valley, uh, we uh, accepted the interim report from Transwaste. Um, we had a discussion and uh, with regard to uh, transportation costs. As most of you are aware, uh, Transwaste, um, we, we, there's an agreement between the councils to offset those that live further away from the landfill site. Um, it's 20-year-old uh, agreement, so it needed updating and We've adjusted the formula uh, to a more fair uh, system, which does has a, have a slight impact uh, for our council. But uh, as I say, it's a slight impact. And we also discussed a uh, director appointment. With regard to the Joint Waste uh, Committee, which met uh, after the Landfill uh, Committee, um, the 
main item was with regard to uh, contributions for waste minimisation uh, initiatives. And due to COVID, uh, et cetera, we have got unallocated funds at this stage. Uh, we've agreed that we will carry uh, these unallocated funds over. Um, it's important to note that the funds are actually held by the individual councils. There was a bit of a misunderstanding amongst some of the councils thinking that the the joint uh, landfill, uh, sorry, the uh, the joint committee had a, a pocket of, of money. Um, it, it doesn't. Um, the, the money is held by councils and used from the councils as necessary. So now that's all from me. And I'll go back to my main agenda and we go on to transport. Meg Gordon. We could, could we ask you a question, please? Right, yeah. Yeah, um, I've got weak concerns about our contractors um, with waste management. Um, number one, there's been a lot of black rubbish bags couldn't get picked up. I understood we made them put on brand new trucks and that picked up the bins in the black bags at the same time. Um, why, why were they just going around picking up the bins and leaving the black bags on the side of the road when their trucks have been specially designed or for picking up both at the same time? Um, that's, that's one question. The second question is regards the transfer station when they were going to um, stop the green waste. And I've got several different reasons. One was they short of hook truck drivers. And then yourself give a, at the community board a load of um, drivers for the green waste. They, they didn't have enough load of drivers, particularly when it's the same load of driver that pushes the stuff into the pit as well as the green waste. It's just, they've only got the one loader operating. It's the same guy that does both. And my concerns also was when the commercial guys bring their green waste, they just said, well, dump it back into the um, into the normal rubbish bin, which is going to require the same amount of level of service from the operators there with the loader and the hook truck. So to me, something's not quite clicking there. I don't know whether you could answer that one, or I think Jared's got his hand up there. Well, I see Jared, and I certainly want to make some comments because people seem to forget that we're going through a bloody pandemic at the moment, and it's hitting everybody. But anyway, I'll pass over to Jared. Um, yeah, I think it's probably more appropriate for me to respond on operational matters um, such as these. So um, in terms of the issue where there was a day where the black bags were not all picked up, um, early in the day, the operator picking up the bags was injured, picking up the bags. Um, and to uh, that was the, uh, you know, effectively the given uh, the constraints there are, um, and as I've mentioned earlier in this meeting, um, some of our contractors are stretched, including our waste management contractors. Um, they uh, didn't have the capacity to backfill in, uh, enough to be able to get the bags that day, um, as well as the bins. So they picked up the bins. Um, in terms of the second question, look, at, there may have been a misunderstanding in terms of the terminology. It was the hook trucks um, that are off site. So it wasn't a capacity constraint on the actual site. Um, that was the ability to uh, use that have uh, specialized drivers um, to operate those trucks to be able to um, transport it off site. So, um, and we, we, um, we had a, a, a that, that, that several day period where we um, weren't able to provide that service to the green waste operators. Look, I'm happy um, if you want to further discuss that to um, fill you in more on that, Councillor Williams. All done. Transport, Mayor Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I've just uh, been seeking a meeting with NZTA over a couple of issues. One is the speed limit in Oxford. There's been some new changes uh, approved by Cabinet, which may make it easy for us to uh, to achieve a 40k speed limit um, uh, in the township of Oxford, uh, along the lines of where uh, the community's aspirations are. So we are seeking a, a meeting coming up in the next week or so with NZTA to discuss that further, and it may mean that we bring our report back um, to seek the, well, both the board's view and the council's 
uh, view on that. It's previously um, was going to require a, a speed um, threshold to be introduced, but my understanding is Kevin has now made a decision which will make that a little easier. It's unfortunate NZTA provided us inconsistent advice we have from two different areas. And our staff had, had rightly relied on that, um, but now they may work with this change, as I understand, that may make that uh, decision a little easier and we won't have to look at that investment of four or 500,000 to achieve that. So um, we're in the process of getting that clarified at the moment. Uh, and as well, um, uh, on the agenda of conversation with uh, NZTA is the Woody and Safety Improvements. Uh, that's been three years uh, since that project was um, uh, identified. And we have been raising it all the time and my patience is running out in the sense of, um, I want to know that there's a commitment financially to do that job uh, and that work and what the program is. And until I get that, um, I don't want the matter to come back to council until we've got a, a firm commitment from NZTA in that direction. Um, so just letting you know uh, two reasonably reasonable issues, the Woody and, if the Woody and Bypass I'd love to see a commitment there, but we've got to be realistic about that. Um, uh, but the safety improvements are something that's been identified for some time, and we've raised it with um, both the ministers, or well, the previous minister, the current minister, the chief executive, and every forum we can. And we even brought NZTA officials down here last year. So uh, I really want to see some answers now and a commitment to, to that. Uh, because it's a matter that's raised and it is important to us to see addressed, particularly with the growth now in Woody and Pegasus and uh, Ravenswood and those connections there. So I'll come back to you with uh, where we get to with that, but in the next uh, coming week, we'll be meeting with NZTA to have that conversation. There's many transport issues going on apart from that, uh, and we've got our submission to Environment Canterbury tomorrow where um, there's a number of points there around passenger transport and other things that we've agreed as colleagues, but it's my update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councillor Rubin, you got a quick question? Uh, just a question of the Mayor. Um, if you're advocating a 40k speed limit on the state highway in Oxford, would you consider doing the same for Woodend? <laughs> I'm, I'm not advocating. This is what the community <laughs> uh, had asked for. And we're coming, we are, we're, it'll be subject to a report. I'm not advocating a 40k speed limit in Woodend. I don't know whether um, whether the numbers would justify that, Councillor Redmond, but that's a matter that Joanne and the team uh, will would need to consider um, and something we'd need to discuss for the board. But it's, it's a state highway, so it's not it's slightly different with Oxford mm. because it's not a state highway through there. It's, uh, mm. Um, it's a road that we have control over, so uh, in that sense, so I think that's the difference, um, as I see it, but Joanne may wish to provide further clarity there. Joanne? I was just going to add that point, Dan, it's actually through Oxford is not a state highway, it used to be an old state highway, but it was um, been handed back to council a number of years ago. Rightio. So that's the portfolio updates, Councillor Ward. Just a quick question. Is there any chance of, of trying to um, promote an underpass at the Pegasus um, Ravenswood area? It is just virtually impossible at the roundabout to, to uh, pedestrian or cycle um, through that busy um, roundabout. It's very, very dangerous. That, that's part of the conversation and we need a commitment to the safety improvements, whether it's an underpass or another uh, form of uh, another solution as part of the consideration that we've been advocating. I know the community's desire is strongly for there to be an underpass so it's a safer connection, but it's a matter we, we need, well, firstly need a commitment to the safety improvements and then we can see where that gets to. That would be a considerable cost. Um, so, uh, we definitely need to know what the fiscal sum is and and and, this, and where they're sitting at uh, in that. We've had, we have had meetings on site and we've explained and showed officials uh, how that looks and the sort of pressures that there are. So we'll see where that gets to, but we'll need a commitment from them financially first before we 
start working out what the solution is, but one of them certainly as an underpass has certainly been discussed. Thank Thanks. you, Dan. That's really Thanks. good. Thanks for that. Uh, so that's the finish of portfolio updates. So, uh, I've got no questions, understanding orders. I've got no urgent general business. Um, so I will move from the chair that we go into public excluded.